Hi guys and welcome to TechBase. In this video, we're going to talk about the latest Windows 11 Insider preview build for the dev channel, which is the build of 23,521. As I've said, the latest build from the dev channel, this is quite a big build in terms of new features and changes and also fixes. In this video, we're going to try to cover them all. And if you enjoy videos like these, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. Before starting the video, a quick message from our video sponsor. This video is sponsored by KeysFan. Keysfan offers Windows, Office, and other tools licenses at a very good price. For example, you can get the Windows 10 Pro license for just $7 by using the coupon code TB50, and you can also upgrade for free to Windows 11 by using the coupon code TB50. You can also get Windows 11 Pro for just $13. Office licenses have an even better discount with 62% off by using the coupon code TB62. Check out the great prices from Keysfan.com and the links from the description below, and don't forget to apply the coupon codes. Thank you to keysfan.com for the sponsorship. Let's continue with the video. First of all, in this build, Microsoft is introducing Windows 365. Windows insiders in the dev and beta channels can participate in the public preview of Windows 365 Switch, which provides the ability to easily move between Windows 365 Cloud PC and the local desktop using the same familiar keyboard commands, as well as a mouse click or swipe gesture through task view on the Windows 11 taskbar. And also, you're going to have more info about this in the article below in the video description along with the official blog post from Microsoft on details on how to participate into this program and how it works. Regarding Windows Copilot, Windows Insiders in the dev channel who log in and are managed by AED, soon to be Microsoft Intro ID, will see Windows Copilot enabled for them again without the need to enable it via Group Policy Editor. Microsoft also made some updates regarding the never combined taskbar icons and if you go to taskbar settings then taskbar behaviors, you'll notice here some new options and basically to make it easier to enable never combined mode on the taskbar. They updated the settings. You can now turn never combined mode on by simply adjusting combined taskbar buttons and hide labels to never. And they provide a separate setting for turning on this for other taskbars, multiple monitor scenarios, for example. But right now, I think this option is not currently working as it should because I, when I set it to never, it still hides the labels. And I think that shouldn't be the case. But of course, I'm sure that this will be fixed in a future belt. Regarding dynamic lighting, you can now instantly sync your Windows accent color with the devices around you with the match my windows accent color toggle under effects inside the dynamic lighting settings of course and they also added the ability to choose a custom color to light up your devices with and in the dynamic lighting page there is also a small change that was discovered by phantom motion 3 basically you have here a new link learn more about dynamic lighting and background light control under all the options in the settings app regarding task manager microsoft updated the task manager settings page to better match the windows 11 experience as you can see, the design has a similar look and feel to the settings in Windows 11 and provides a clearer UI separating categories into different sections. And they updated also some dialogues in the Task Manager too, and I think that is very nice. Regarding Windows Spotlight, after doing an OS update in certain cases, such as using the default Windows 11 background or a solid color, Windows Spotlight may be enabled for you. If you decide you don't want Windows Spotlight enabled, you can always start it off. And in future OS updates, it should not be enabled for you again unless you choose to rename enable the experience. Regarding search on the taskbar, Windows Search now uses the Microsoft Bing Search app to return web content and search results. In the European Economic Area, you can enable installed Microsoft Store apps that implement a web search provider to return web content and search results in Windows Search through settings. Regarding the settings app, the end task feature under System and for developers no longer requires developer mode to be enabled first before it can be used. Also under settings, personalization, and then device usage, you'll notice a new option which is called development in this list and if you toggle it on it will automatically open the dev home app this basically matches what is shown in the OB section of Windows. And as you can see, it automatically opened the dev home app. And this build, as also mentioned by Phantom Motion 3, the tooltips for the previews inside the start menu in the recommended section are now fixed. Basically, when there is no thumbnail to show, they will basically show nothing and there won't be any empty space left on the thumbnail. Some other changes in this build in the European economic area, Windows will now require consent to share data between Windows and other signed in Microsoft services, you will see some Windows features start to check for consent now, with more being added in the future builds without consent to share data between Windows and other signed in Microsoft services. Some functionality in Windows features may be unavailable, for example, certain types of file recommendations under the recommended section in the start menu. Regarding widgets, we also have 
a new option as you can see we have here a new button which says pin dashboard basically if you click on it this will pin your widgets board and if you pin it of course you can still close it by either clicking the button in the taskbar or by pressing escape while widgets is in the foreground or swiping on the left edge of the screen if you have a touch device. And in this build, Microsoft is also releasing a snipping tool update, which will basically introduce a new section or a new button whenever you are editing a screenshot or a video. And let me show you that. I'm gonna make a new screenshot here fast. I'm gonna open it inside snipping tool. And as you can see here at the top in the right side, we have a new button, edit and paint. And you can use this to very easily edit something, resize or crop a screenshot that you've just done inside snipping tool. And also you can use this for recordings. So if you go inside the snipping tool, select recording, click on new, select the region, start, do a quick recording here and then stop it. You'll notice that for recordings, you'll have the option to edit in Clipchamp. I think that is pretty nice and pretty useful for Windows 11 users. These are basically the changes and improvements, but now let's talk about a few fixes. Regarding the file explorer, Microsoft fixed an issue where you couldn't drag a file out of an archived folder to extract it with one of the newly supported archive formats. I think that is a pretty nice fix. They fix an issue where when extracting one of the newly supported archive formats using the extract all option in the context menu, it wasn't working unless Windows Explorer was set as the default for that file type. And also when trying to extract one of the new archive format and the file is password encrypted, it will now show a message saying that this isn't currently supported. They also fixed a bug where insiders may have experienced a file explorer crash when dragging the scroll bar or attempting to close the window during an extended file loading process. Regarding the modernized address bar, they fixed an issue which was causing the search box in File Explorer to not work well with IMEs, and they also fixed an issue where pasting using the context menu in the address bar wasn't working or other context menu actions in the address bar. Regarding the new home page in File Explorer, they fixed an issue where when trying to scroll with touch on home might result in everything getting selected, and they also fixed a wide flash and dark theme when switching between home and gallery. Regarding taskbar and system tray, they fixed an issue that removed the USB icon in its options from the system tray. They fixed an issue where the titles were missing from taskbar previews when turning on tablet optimized taskbar while using uncombined taskbar. They fixed an issue where uncombined taskbar's app indicators weren't showing correctly after it showed something that was being downloaded. Fixed an explore.exe crash impacting system tray reliability. Fixed an issue where the end task feature wasn't working if you tried it when there were multiple windows open of that app. They also fixed an issue where using end task on certain apps would cause other unrelated apps to close. Regarding HDR backgrounds, they fixed an issue where your HDR wallpaper might appear washed out although HDR was enabled, and they also fixed an issue where it wasn't possible to select .jxl files for your wallpaper slideshow. And another fix, if get help isn't installed, when opening one of the troubleshooters in settings, it will now prompt you to install it rather than showing an error about not having an app associated for the action. So basically, this is all there is to it in this latest dev channel build, 23521. You can check out more info about that in the article below in the video's description. So this was the video for today. I hope you liked it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like below and don't forget to subscribe to the tech base channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. I was Zubanir from TechBase. Until next time, have a nice day.